Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to a simulation of two galaxies colliding. In this video I wanted to see if we can actually uh, change this a little bit and make this into two quasars colliding. And we're going to do this using the Universe Sandbox and a few tricks that I've learned over the years. Anyway, let's see how this goes and welcome to What The Math. So first thing we have to do here is we need to actually change these two galaxies and remove their um, central supermassive black holes, turning them into, well, essentially what I like to call microquasar. It's a black hole that has um, actual jets emanating from the center. And we're going to do this using an old trick that I showed you in one of the previous videos, where you basically take um, a, a white dwarf, like for example, Sirius B, you then place it relatively close to this black hole, I think I missed. And then what you do is you zoom in here, remove the old black hole, which is, oh no, I lost it, where did it go? Okay, there you go, remove the old black hole. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change this white dwarf into first a pulsar by going in here, I believe. There is that button. And then we're going to change this into a black hole. So to do this, all we need to do is basically give it a lot and a lot of mass. For example, a thousand suns. Uh, it usually actually activates a supernova. So we're going to change this and delete the supernova. And if it didn't really change into a black hole just yet, give it some more mass and it should change into one right away. So there's that black hole. We're going to give it one Milky Way of mass, just like uh, the black hole that I just erased. We're also going to rename it and uh, increase the actual uh, magnetic field here just so that we can actually see uh, the jets. So to do this, um, let's start multiplying it by 10 until we start seeing those jets coming off the black hole. There they are. Okay, maybe a little bit too much, I think. Just decrease it a little bit. And there you go. Look at that. A very, very beautiful pair of jets that actually is misaligned so we're going to give it um, maybe zero degrees here and there you go look at that one of our quasars is ready to go so now let's do the same with the second galaxy in this case is actually the andromeda galaxy and it's supposed to represent the um, collision between andromeda and the milky way that's going to happen in about 2.5 billion years from now so same thing here we're going to take sirius b change it into a pulsar then change it into a black hole. There you go. And lastly, give it enough mass to actually look like the black hole that we erased. And the last step is, of course, to make the jets big enough to be visible from the outside. Now, the thing is, um, I want this to be positioned so that the jets are aligned with the galaxy as well. Uh, so we're going to change the yaw here and the rotation yaw until it kind of looks aligned and there we go i think that's just, this is perfect now uh let's make sure that the jets are not too big because we want them to be just perfect okay maybe a little bit bigger though and there you go so we have these two active galactic nuclear galaxies um two quasars although actually no technically this is not a quasar uh, because a quasar would be this just the light itself uh one of these is a quasar one of them is a blazer because it's a little bit misaligned but a more appropriate term to use here would actually be Seifert Galaxy. It's named after Carl Seifert, an American astronomer that well, essentially was responsible for discovering and describing these types of uh, galaxies. And the reason they have these active galactic nuclei um, is usually because they're um, actively absorbing a lot of matter on the inside. And so now we have two of them colliding. And let's see what happens here. If we accelerate time, and uh, oh wow one of them starts spinning a little bit but that's okay we can forgive it for doing that it's not going to affect anything and so now let's wait and observe what happens to these two galaxies as they start interacting uh, with one another uh, so it will actually take a few million years for for them to um, start colliding in a sense and exchanging their material but because we have these two relatively easy to see black holes here we'll now also see what happens to the actual supermassive black holes. Now, interestingly, very recently, uh, scientists actually discovered two uh, supermassive black holes in two separate galaxies colliding essentially in real time. And uh, for the first time ever, 
Oh, look at that. They collided very beautifully. Um, for the first time ever, we were able to observe the, um, or are currently observing the actual process of collision. So this process right now is uh, currently being observed by scientists in real time. Uh, it will actually take a few years before we finally see what happens at the end. But in this particular simulation, it happened so quickly that you didn't even notice pretty much anything. Uh, there were clearly quite a lot of things going on. As a matter of fact, at this point, what happens to this galaxy is that it will start getting even more active. As a matter of fact, the actual jets will most likely increase even more. It will become an even more active galaxy. And this will last for a few thousand years, possibly even a million years. Um, and will result in the absorption of a lot of material in the middle of the galaxy. When the galaxy becomes so active, um, most of the central region actually becomes uh, inert. It's unable to produce new stars. And uh, in a sense, this is actually, in some sense, a dead galaxy, but also not really because it's active in, in another sort of way. It's active by being able to produce all of this tremendous amount of energy with its uh, supermassive black hole in the middle. Now let's wait a little bit and see what happens after a few more millions of years. And let's see how actually all of this material combines into a new galaxy that uh, we're going to be referring to as Milk Dromeda, because in a sense, this is a simulation of what will happen to the Milky Way and to the Andromeda galaxy in the next few billions of years. Now, I'm kind of curious whether we'll be able to create a stable galaxy here, but with time, um, th these two jets will actually uh, dissipate in power and become less and less active. And we're going to simulate this by uh, essentially reducing the uh, magnetic field here by uh, making it half first, and then eventually it will become even less powerful. Uh, so, um, in some sense, this is actually what would happen to two, well, you, you could call them quasars if they're far away, or um, C4 galaxies if they're much closer to us and we can actually see the galactic shape. Uh, but this is kind of what would happen. They would become combined into one. Uh, the two supermassive black holes uh, would join, they would merge and become more active for a little bit. Uh, there would also be a tremendous amount of... Um, gravitational waves released uh, through these two collisions. Uh, but after all of this, it would actually subside and create one supermassive galaxy that would actually not be very active after a few million years. We're going to simulate this as well. But as you can see, there's also going to be some pieces and some parts of the galactic matter that just kind of fly away and never get absorbed. So let's wait a little bit and let's see what kind of a shape we'll acquire here after a few million years. And uh, approximately 200 million years after the end of the collision, this is what you get. A more or less spiral galaxy, although not as dense as uh, the galaxies before, but much, much, much more voluminous, much bigger in size. Um, I decided to leave a bit of a galactic nuclei here, but we're going to remove that as well because uh, with time, all of the matter that's being absorbed by the uh, black hole in the middle of the galaxy is actually going to slowly disappear and there's going to be practically nothing left here. So after some time, the galaxy will most likely just look like this. And so that's one of the possible scenarios of what might happen to two quasars co colliding or two Seifert galaxies colliding or really just to any galaxies colliding. And uh, sometimes it actually works out a little bit differently where two black holes kind of fly apart and other times you get this. So that's one of the possible scenarios. Maybe one day we'll explore another one where things go a little bit differently. Other than that, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about galactic collisions and also quasars and C4 galaxies as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who enjoys uh, learning about space through video games and simulations. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. So that's our galaxy right here. Let's actually rename it, Milk Dromeda, and end the simulation here. Thank you, space out, bye bye.